This week, it's all about hunting whitetail in Kansas. And man, do we love to hunt whitetails. This is one of my favorite places to hunt. I can't wait. He's right on top. Take him. Well, that didn't work out like I wanted it to. <laughs> nice. Anchor points and draw length mean absolutely nothing. Mankind has evolved. Bows are for put. There's nothing to this. There's a bug right there. He's flicking his ear. Should I kill him? Time to get up, time to get up now. Our lives move pretty fast, but it's only in the moment of the hunt that life slows down. It's not a matter of what we do, but how we do it. With passion, drive, and the challenge to accept nothing but our best. We are the Wildlifers. This week we're heading to Kansas. Dustin and I hunted Kansas several years ago. That's where we met Dave Rawlins. And you know, we enjoyed where we hunted, but we, we felt like it was over hunted. And I said, we need to get our own lease. We talked to Dave about it. We kind of put a bug in his ear, you know, hey, if you hear of any property coming up, well, just let us know and we'll come look at it. I think we told him we wanted a minimum 4,000 acres all in one place, not scattered out everywhere. We got to look in uh, for property in central Kansas and uh, some friends of mine found this property. Me and Dustin come up and checked it out. I flew up there and looked at it and I liked it. I liked the people that own the property and we made a deal with them and we've been hunting it now for two years. We've been on this place, this lease for about two years. This is our second year here. Man, it's a great country. We've got some big bucks. We put in a pretty good management program to let a lot of these bucks get some age structure on them. I came in September and, and I put cameras out. I've got about 15 cameras out all over this farm. I've been trying to pattern these deer for two years now. Dustin has really been doing his homework. I think he's, he's really done a good job in finding where these deer are. I've got deer on the hit list. We're trying to pattern what these deer are feeding on what they're doing. I gotta give it to Dustin. He's really worked his butt off to make things happen for us in Kansas. There's a, so many little bucks there that are young and growing bigger and bigger every year. And we have every reason to believe that it's gonna be epic at some point in the very near future. It's phenomenal deer hunting. It's just gonna get better and better every year. We're gonna get on them this week. Dan this week, good friend John Evert is getting a chance at his first whitetail ever. I really enjoy giving people opportunities to do the things they love and any chance that I have to, to take someone on a hunting trip that otherwise might not get to do that kind of thing. I always think of John Evert first because I've spent so much time with John and we're such great friends that I had an opportunity to take him on a hunt for a big whitetail, so I did. So while Dan teams up with Dave, Dustin is going to guide John. You know, we start out in the morning and we're looking for this buck with this giant kicker off the back. We call it a flyer. You know, we I've got pictures of him. I've seen him once or twice while I was checking cameras. And we're looking all morning for him and we haven't seen him. And we drive up behind Dan and he's glassing. And sure enough, he spotted our buck. There's a bunch of deer right there. Well, that's gonna be them. All of a sudden, we find John's buck uh, that they're after. They're hunting half a mile from us. Where is it from the silo? Between us. I just wanna watch a little bit, make sure you don't come out anywhere. You can't tell it from here, but there's a 
nice draw there with a whole bunch of uh, shinry, mm -hmm. and they'll bed up in that draw. I've, I've seen them bed in there a lot. As this deer's going over the hill, um, I know kind of a good idea where he's gonna go bed up. I think we're gonna go get him. There's a bunch of deer right there. Well, that's gonna be them. All of a sudden we find John's buck uh, that they're after. They're hunting half a mile from us. Can't tell it from here, but there's a nice draw there with a whole bunch of uh, shinry. Mm -hmm. And they'll bed up in that draw. I've, I've seen them bed in there a lot. Right when we pull up, Dan and Dave have the buck that we're looking for spotted. I know kind of a good idea where he's gonna go bed up. I think we're gonna go get him. In the bottom, there's like a uh, pile of wood. Yep. And there's, you can't tell it, but there's just a little ridge right past it. Yep. And that finger that goes up there is a lot deeper than it looks. And it's full of uh, shimmery. While we were showing, Dustin and John, where we thought the buck they were after was bedded. We looked across the road up on the side of another hill and we throw our binoculars up and we look and we're like, oh man, that's the one we're after. When they were getting ready to go after John's deer. We looked over here across the other side and we see the one that I've been looking for. And I'm very impatiently waiting on Dave to come over here and let's go over and try to get him. That is a giant buck. My goodness, he's big. That's a big son of a gun. He's a good deer. So we had to get in the truck and get after it. This deer you know, is a long way, but his frame looks impressive. He is pretty impressive. He's standing right on top. They're gonna have hell getting him with all them other deer there. Dan and I is going after this guy. They're going after that guy. Something's gotta go down. There's the brush pile that's burnt. We need a fence right behind it. We stay down and stay in that shadow and pop off. Hey, love, can you save me? Knowing where the buck is going to bed gives Dustin and John a big advantage. So while they move into position and try to set up on John's buck, Dan and Dave are across the ranch working on relocating Dan's buck. Right there behind them does, he, he's out of sight now. I mean, that, that deer had big horns, Dave. I mean, that, that frame, it was hard to see, but it looked right. After cutting the distance on Dan's buck, the guys bail out on foot to try to get within shooting distance. I knew we were really close to this deer, and a doe starts walking out, and I think he's gonna be right behind her. But not yet, all hope isn't lost. Right as we crest the top of this hill, we look down and there's our buck, 200 yards away, right at the bottom of the hill. Got him, yeah. Matt! I can't see him now, he's blocking me. Dan quickly gets into position, but simultaneously blocks the camera. Dan's in front of me. Ah, let's go, next bridge. So Dan and Dave run down the hill to reposition, but the buck has given them the slip. This was unbelievable. If it wasn't for my arch enemy, the camera, we'd be holding his head in my hand right now. That's just how it is, hunting for TV. That was him. Meanwhile, as Dan and Dave head back to the truck, a mile back to the south, Dustin and John have made their way into the area they believe their buck is bedded. We finally got to the top of the ridge where I could see where we thought the deer was bedded. All of a sudden, I caught an ear flicker in the plum thicket. There's our buck. He's flicking his ear. There's that buck right there. These Kansas whitetail, they can be tough to hunt, especially the way we're hunting them. As long as they don't move, Nature's camo can make them completely disappear. So 
until the buck finally turns his head, we see the kicker and we know it's him. We're in position, we just need him to stand up. We finally got to the top of the ridge where I could see where we thought the deer was bedded. All of a sudden, I caught an ear flicker in the plum thicket. There's our buck. There's that buck right there. We're in position. We just need him to stand up or he could lay there all day. All of a sudden, it hits me. We gotta get aggressive. We need this buck to get up. So I crawl around the hill and I get a call out of my pocket and I start blowing on it. And at first I kind of sound like what it's supposed to sound like. <laughs> Gotta be careful hunting these Midwest whitetail. One false move and all you're gonna see is what they're named after, tails over the hill. This deer doesn't even flick his ear at me. Then I blow a little harder, and I get louder and louder. He's not budging. Finally, I'm down here blowing on this thing as hard as I can, and I don't know what I sounded like, but it might have been a sick buzzard. He's getting up. Finally, this deer decides to get up and stretch. I don't think he cared about me blowing on the call anymore. He just stood up. Can't kill him. Yeah. Nice. He saw him stand up at the same time, bam, he drilled him, made a perfect shot. Deer went straight down, and while we're up there talking, about 12 more deer stood up that I had no idea were in that plum thicket. Thank goodness, the right one stood up. That was awesome. <laughs> I was trying everything I could to get him to stand up. That was Good awesome. shot, man. Thanks. Let's go look at him. Yeah. Ooh, he's getting heavy. All right, there he is. Yeah. That's a good track job there. He went straight down. Yeah, he did. Look at the dang flyer back here. He was in there scratching his back with that. He was. I named him the flyer buck, but I think his new name is gonna be back scratcher. Because <laughs> he scratches his back with that thing. Beautiful deer. That's your first white tail? It is. As many animals as you've killed and guided and <sighs> That's, that's amazing that that's your first whitetail. That's awesome. It is. And he's a cool buck, too. Day two arrives, and Dan is attempting to relocate his buck. I see a buck, Dave. I can't tell what it is yet. It's coming out now. It's a buck, but I, that's not him. Let's go. I mean, I don't think he's with them. Let's go get where we can see. Yeah, I don't think he is either. Let's go back to the other side and get up on that hill and glass. We'll have the sun to our back and the wind in our face. Yeah. The guys reposition themselves, but after glassing the majority of the morning, Dan and Dave decide to meet up with Dustin back at camp before moving on to another part of the ranch. I'm gonna borrow that next year when we go to Colorado because I can't find my at bow. 500 yards? Yeah. We put him under the camp. I'll tell you what, <laughs> hang on a minute, hang on, let me see that thing. Do, we, do you do any practice in here in the parking lot? No. You don't? No. You, oh, because I was going to take your bow target out there and show you that anchor points and draw length mean absolutely nothing. Anchor points, draw lengths, you know, you got to have this knuckle with the earlobe and this knuckle at the jaw and you got to keep this hand loose and none of that matters, none at all. And I can hit any one of the bullseyes you call right now. 
Really? Absolutely. It doesn't mean anything. You know, to be honest with you, when Dan said he was going to shoot my bow and he could do it and draw lengths, anchor points, all that doesn't matter, I was hoping he missed the whole target just so I could make fun of him. You think you can shoot my bow? I don't know that you're gonna mac. You might get like. No, no, I, that doesn't mean anything. I'm telling you, it doesn't mean anything. Twenty. Okay. Which one of them pins is the twenty? Green, the top green one. This being the top one. Top. All right, have I ever shot this bow? Never have ever shot Have I ever had that release in my hand? Never. Okay. How does this thing go on there? Which, what, well, hold on now. How come I get one of these? I guess I grabbed, it doesn't matter at 20 yards. This it is don't a, matter? This is a practice arrow because one time I shot close to it and I knocked the other Yeah, one. I do that all the time. The, this goes up. That goes the up. Horn just goes up. Okay. Does this, just sit, rest on there? <laughs> no, no, flip it up. Well, mine's got a little yeah. handle on it. Oh, there you go. Who knows where this arrow's gonna go? I'm thinking it's gonna hit the wall behind the target. I want, I want which to shoot in the center. There's a, like a little dot. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. Top target, I mean the top pin. Yep. Bullseye. I mean, th there's nothing to this. It don't matter if you hold it here, back here like this Just one, up here up. like Hagen's. Just got to line it up. Put the little dot on the target and rip the trigger. You got him. It's nothing to it. My God, everybody's like, I got to have my own equipment. Now I got to hear this forever. Now Dan's a bow expert. The one thing I didn't want to happen. See what I tell you? Easy. The wild lifers are in Kansas hunting whitetail. While John Ebert was successful filling his first whitetail tag, Dan continues hunting for the buck he's been targeting, nicknamed Baseball Bat. If they cut up through there, just bounce over to this next one. We pull up on this hill, and we're just glassing a hillside of grass, and we see some does actually run over the top. Right there's a deer. Why is she running out of there? You're getting coyote look at her? As they're coming down, kind of toward us, this buck jumps up right in the middle of them and starts down the hill. And we throw our binoculars up and like, Dave, that's the one we're after. Yep, yeah, it's a buck. Where? Straight behind him, two deer. That's that's him. Yeah, that's baseball guy. That's him. Sleeping. Yep, that's him. Yeah. And he ends up going down into a uh, stand of cottonwood trees and beds up. And we start thinking we need to come up with a plan. We'll just go down this hill to the left, keep the wind in our favor, work around the base of this hill down to a draw, and then we'll be able to pop our head up over this little knob down there and see if we can get a better look at it. We get up on the edge of actually a tank dam and pick our head up and we all I can see is just this much of three tines sticking up. We see these three tines, he's 180 yards. We're just gonna sit here and let him stand and then I'll have a perfect shot at him and we'll get him. The buck stands up. There he goes, there he goes. Oh, he's up, he's up. But he doesn't stand up and just walk to his right just a little bit. When his knees lock, he's running. Okay, he's coming up. I don't see him. He goes up a draw, we lose sight of him for just a second, and we start seeing him running, he's going up the hill. He goes up and he almost gets to the crest of the hill, and he stops and he turns to look back. I think it was 383 yards. He's right on top. Oh, I'm on him. And I am rock solid on him. Take him. Hit him. Well, that didn't work out like I wanted it to. He didn't go maybe 20 or 30 yards, piled up right there, and I would dearly love to see Dustin pull that off. There he is. Yep. That's him, dude. Look at that mass. I know. Woo. Heavy, isn't he? Well, when I walked up on this deer, I, I really, first thing I really noticed was his mass, how he carried it all the way out his main beams. 
and how, how big and thick and gnarly he was at his bases. That's something you don't see in South Texas is, is that huge mass that goes all the way out to the tips. Four or five. He's four, man, four. As it turned out, if I would have been able to age him just a little better, I probably wouldn't have shot him until the following year. But he's still a great buck, and I'm still going to mount him, and he can hang with all the rest of them in my house. I'm so happy for Dan. He got a great buck. He's sending me pictures here at the airport. I'm so happy he got some, because he doesn't shoot something very often. But I really can't wait to get there and shoot my own buck. <laughs> was an awesome hunting week. Now, I didn't get a deer. And next year, I'm gonna be in the tree with my bow. Hang on a minute. Trying to get my sights on a big Kansas whitetail. Try these sights, bud. They work better. <laughs> For all your wildlife or social media needs, make sure to follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.